Today's episode is brought to you by Applaudable.net. I square up, shoot the ball. At that point, a good amount of the camp had filed in. I square up, boom, it goes in, game over. And I say, Michael, get off my court now. <laughs> You're a loser. Okay? I beat you. I mean, I don't know what, I went crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Your latest book that people can attain is Living on Purpose. On Purpose, yeah. Now, in Love that book, by the way. I, I actually started reading it again last night. My wife's like, you're reading your book again? I said, yeah, it's a really good book. She's like, you're crazy. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's, it, it is one of those books that's, you could pick that book up and read like one chapter. You could pick it up anywhere in the book and read one chapter and be good. Mm -hmm. It's got, it's just chock full of nuggets that are just, really really good that i've got from a lot of really smart people mm. uh it, it's because i talk to people about passion all the time and i actually get people obviously that's what i'm doing but i get people who actually have said to me you know audience and things like that saying um i don't have a passion and i say if you can't find your passion find your purpose because in finding something that is almost a cause or something that motivates you to be driven you often just fall into your passion. So I, I would probably, you obviously always love sport, but when you started out, you were linking sporting people with organizations, uh, with your Steiner agency. The memorabilia stuff was almost an epiphany on a train. Secondary. That's it. Yeah, it was secondary. And, and it's become the bigger, and often people fall into their their passion. And um, obviously you are passionate about it. You've got to meet a lot of people. You're talking earlier about too, you know, giving those individuals the one experience, like if you're in an audience and Jordan talks about that a lot, like he went out and did his best every game for that one individual that would only ever see him play that once that may have paid for a good ticket or a bad ticket, but may, may never have seen him play again. So his approach was to, that. yeah, was to give that that standard so i noted on your actual i've got a question that's a lead in that's a segue i noticed on your actual um website steiner uh brandonsteiner.com that you actually have a photo with michael jordan so is there a story with him or or is that just in yeah i mean michael was amazing i went to his i went to his fantasy camp in 2000 and uh i got hurt the second day and you know i was really bummed and, and he had stepped on my foot on the way coming over i thought he was gonna say brandy you okay and he steps on my foot and goes on the court to play with my team and i'm just devastated this is 20 years ago and i go home and i start getting into rocky mode and, and for some reason i just started playing the game within the game like i'm gonna go back to the camp and I'm going to kick Michael Jordan's ass. I'm like, and I'm telling him, all my friends this. And I'm like, Brandon, calm down. I said, no, oh, I'm shooting and I'm running. I'm lifting weights. And, you know, I thought I was in good shape. That's the other thing. I, you know, a lot of times you don't tell yourself the truth. You're just dead wrong. That's why it's important to keep some people around you that will tell you the truth. I call those the accountability police. And I wish somebody had told me that I wasn't in as good a shape as I thought I was in. But this next year, I got myself in much better shape. And. So I saw Michael and I told him that I wanted to get on the court with him and kick his ass. And uh, I had a dream because I always think everything starts with the dream. And I had the dream that I kicked his ass and it was just a really good day for me. He said, that sounds more like a nightmare. <laughs> it was funny, man. So we get, you know, we're out and he, he's like, you know, we pick up, you know, we play basketball at seven in the morning, man. Tomorrow morning. I said, I'll be there. Let's go. And don't bring that North Carolina stuff, that powder blue stuff. It's not going to scare me. But we get on the court. We're playing four on four. First of all, on the first play, I boxed Michael out. I grabbed things that another man should not be grabbing. We were like 10 feet off the court. And he's like, who are you? And I was just trash talking. Like, Michael, it's not going to work out for you today. But on a serious note, before I really get into the heart of the story, I just want you to know when I got on the court with him, I know it's delirious, but I really thought, you know, this guy's not that big. I think I got him. I think I could check him. I think I could actually handle him. Um, this, this guy, I, I think I got it and I know it's delirious, but I just want you to say every bone in my body was confident. Um, but in my mindset, I said, nobody here thinks that I'm going to be able to do what I, what I think I'm going to be able to do in this game. But I was confident and I, I was prepared. I was confident in my ability and I liked my strategy. My strategy is get the ball and shoot. So the first time I get the ball, which is over on the left side on the wing, I shoot it. And Michael wasn't taking me that seriously, and it goes in. And he kind of gives me the palms, like, 
I said, Michael, why don't you play a little defense? Obviously, you're getting a little old. Maybe you can't guard me. And I, I was going crazy on the trash talking. But so the next time I get the ball, I go and shoot. And he's kind of a little good distance away from me. And he, I mean, he was like Superman. Boom. I mean, I don't know where this man came from. I don't know what happened. I mean, I don't know if the ball was landed 20 years later. It's like, and I was, it was a little bit of a, you know, punch in the face. I was like, whoa, I guess maybe this party may not be quite as extensive as I was hoping it would be. But anyway, we're playing, and it's six to five in the seven game, and he's got the ball, and he's kind of, you know, yeah. and I'm thinking that maybe this little soiree is over. But I'm still guarding him, and I'm checking him, and I'm, I have a moment of a little doubt, and I'm thinking, maybe this is over. And he passes the ball to the short, stumpy guy underneath, and he misses the layup. I run to the right elbow, and I clap. I get the ball, shoot it, nothing but net. It's high score. Now, I know I, I take the ball out. I want to pass it to the worst guy on the court. Why? Because he's nervous. Game on the line. He's going to pass it right back, and he does. So I pass it to the guy in the corner. Now I'm on the right elbow, but five feet behind it, more on the top of the key. And I see Michael coming. Problem is, one of his guys gets in the way, <laughs> and he can't get to me. I square up, shoot the ball. At that point, a good amount of the camp had filed in. I square up, boom, it goes in, game over. And I say, Michael, get off my court now. <laughs> You're a loser, okay? I beat you. I mean, I don't know what, I went crazy. I said, and maybe you can have next and play me and after you sit on the sideline and wait. He's like, pissed. <laughs> he sits down next to my friend. Thank God I had my friend with me to watch the whole thing. And he goes, who is Steiner. <laughs> What's funny about that story is, and I want to, hey, listen, it's a, it, it's a funny, entertaining story. And it's true. And, and I talk about it in the first book, but first of all, it's so important to dream. I mean, it is the initiator of everything great that happened. And picturalization is something that I use a lot with big accounts. When I went in to get the Yankees to sign with me, like I use picturalization in an incredible way because you can control your thoughts and if you put incredibly good thoughts and positive thoughts and schemes to, to get something to work out, you'd be surprised the power you have to get something done. And I'm sure if I played Michael Jordan 100 times, there's a good chance I could lose 100. There's more than likely. But at the end, it didn't happen. I had that dream. I had that vision. And it happened. It happened. And every time I see Michael, by the way, at a golf tournament or whatever, he immediately beelines over to whoever I'm with and says that I'm a complete liar, that <laughs> none of this happened, and I should, that they should be listening to me. Yeah. They got him. I mean, you know, that's just the greatest of all time, man. And I, I got him. I mean, I got him on a bad day. You know, I, I, had, to, you know, I, had, my, I had my say. And, you know, I'm, I'm not a great player. I'm not this, that. But on that particular day, you know, I had my day. Every dog has his day. You've been talking about underdog mindset and you've been talking about um, other mindsets. It sounds like it was a combination of everything that you more or less believed that you weren't, that you knew you were the underdog, but you said, no, nah, that's not going to work. 20 years later, you know, I'm still happy. <laughs> like, I don't need to even, I, I, I'm just still happy that that moment happens. I love basketball and I still play. And I know that that probably that situation will never happen again, frankly, but it happened. I still love telling the story. And my wife's like, I cannot hear the story again. I'm like, I need this on my tombstone when I die. I want just a small version of what happened here. I want people that if they walk by, I want them to know what I did to that guy. You said it might never. Anybody can have that day if you concentrate, make a commitment and dream big. And I want the people that are listening to know that you, your dreams are powerful. And the commitment you put towards your dreams is powerful. And you'd be surprised what you can talk yourself into. Yeah. That's a, that's a great story. It's a great story. I actually didn't expect that story, so that's that's gold. No, a lot of fun there, obviously. And you you've had a number of athletes, you know, over the years, and a lot of them are highly competitive. And I I think you know, being in that environment, you talk about positivity. You talk about a lot of the things that that have driven you today, including you know positivity. And I think one of your your things that you talk about in keynotes is finding good positive people around to have around you that that breeds positivity yeah, absolutely so what sort of failures have you actually had over the years that have driven you 
to success because it can't I mean, all so be many, good. So many. I mean, especially when you're running something, you know, you're going to fail and, and you're going to struggle. I just think the most important thing is failing is not the opposite of success. It's a big part of success. And life is hard. Life is difficult. Life is full of a bunch of bad shit that can happen. And the faster you recognize that when you run into bad stuff and, and things do get difficult, you'll be in a much better position to absorb it and deal with it. It never gets easy to fail and lose. But on the other hand, if you're prepared for it to some degree, when, it, when you go through, you know what you need to get out of it. And obviously, you know, you always want to learn and, you know, and get lessons learned from failure. Um, I talk a lot about the failures, which is really worthwhile. The nothing about the third book, Living on Purpose. I was probably the most transparent about all my failures in that book because I, I wanted people to understand that, you know, you got you to take a step back and look at those failures. Mm-hmm. So yeah. uh, I, I won't hold you up anymore. I do really appreciate okay. your time. Well, thanks for having uh, me. I, I do answer all my questions on LinkedIn. Unfortunately, you got to follow me on LinkedIn because I'm past the connection mode, but mm-hmm. I answer all my messages on LinkedIn and, um, you can go to brandsteiner.com and register for the blog, or you can just Facebook, you know, go on Facebook and like my Facebook. Yeah, and you also have your podcast too, Project X, um, and yep. you've you've had um, other been on other pro- podcasts, including mine now. So um, hopefully, I'll get a share on your uh, your social. Yeah, I love stuff. these conversations; they're great, and uh, I'm looking forward to getting to Australia at some point. Uh, and, uh, uh, visiting i heard it's amazing so i'm hoping it's one of my one of my list of things to do appreciate you being on the show well, is good it good luck uh, you got a good thing going and just keep keep you know keep keep responding and make sure you know it's your return on interaction you know keep the interaction going and you'll be fine excellent thanks brandon thanks for your time you're welcome thank you thanks for joining us for a basketball conversation Feel free to start a conversation of your own with other Oswish super fans by commenting below And I look forward to sharing our next conversation with you soon. I hope you'll join us again sometime. Catch you later.